Well, welcome back folks. In today's video, we're going to work on the ignition switch for the Suzuki TS50 Gaucho project. What we're going to do, or what I'm going to attempt to do in this video, it might be a couple of them, a couple in the series, I don't know yet because I haven't shot the material, but I'm going to attempt to recondition this ignition switch. This is the original switch off the little TS50. It does work uh, in all positions, but it does need a little love and uh, we're going to see what we can do to make it look presentable. Now this is perfectly acceptable as I got it for a rider or for a um, survivor bike, but uh, for restoration I'm going to see if I can't do something a little bit nicer. So um, we're going to go over here to the bench right behind me here and we're going to do some up close work uh, and I'll explain the project in a little bit as more I detail. indicated, I uh, believe this is the original ignition switch that came with this bike and the primary thing, or there's two things that tell me that. One is the general condition of it. The uh, patina on this assembly and the wear matches the rest of the bike. And number two, the ignition key number, uh, and I do have two keys for it, by the way. I have a new, brand new key um, around here somewhere, the spare key. The uh, ignition lock number matches the steering head lock on the bike also. And since those two match, pretty confident this is the original uh, ignition switch. Uh, I did um, I did test it with my uh, meter and all the connections work as I should according to the wiring diagram and the service manual that I have and it did work on the bike everything worked the lights worked uh, obviously the ignition worked because I ran the bike so I'm confident everything uh, is working in the switch what I really want to do is recondition it it's not so much a restoration because I'm not going to take this all apart this whole lock mechanism apart what I want to do is make it look more presentable in reality is that this is most of this is hidden the only part of the of the switch you really see is this part right here this front bezel facing out all the rest of this back here is tucked up behind in the frame when I took it off the bike, uh, and I'm guessing the previous owner did this, uh, because of this boot right here you can see is dried and split. I did clean this up a little bit. I'll come back to that in a minute. The previous owner, at least I'm thinking it was the previous owner, let me take this escutcheon off of here. I'm going to talk about that more in a, a little bit more in a minute also. I think the previous owner uh, used contact cement or rubber adhesive to glue or adhere this rubber boot because it was split to the body of the lock. So the, the lock had been, or the body here, had um, rubber cement, contact cement all around it and then this boot had been just glued in place. Something like that. And he actually did a, a very good job. He got everything aligned pretty good. It, lo it looked good. Um, and then he used a black zip tie around this uh, section here that extends down over the wiring and just to hold that together. Obviously I took it apart, I soaked um, this, this boot in mineral spirits, what our friends in the UK call spirits or paint thinner, and it removed all the adhesive, that rubber adhesive, just to get it off. And then I just took uh, some uh, spirits and removed any uh, remaining adhesive on the body here itself just to clean it up. This piece right here, this outer shell, originally I believe was a zinc dichromate and that's that golden zinc color that you see and you, you can tell most of it's wore off. In fact this was this was quite dirty uh, with just contamination from being ridden on the off-road primarily, of course, and it's starting to form a little bit of rust. So I've cleaned that all up. I've got probably a little more cleaning to do uh, in preparation for trying to uh, coat this to make it look like the original gold color zinc dichromate. I'm also going to remove this uh, sleeving here, this black sleeving, and replace that. I will have to remove the plug on the end right here so I can get the sleeving off. 
Another reason I need to remove the sleeving is I want to open carefully open up this clamp right here. I think you can see because I'm going to treat that and paint that as well to match the body because this this shroud right here and this tab with, a, with the clamp around the wiring is all one piece. I will desolder this. Uh, I think this is just a jumper or a ground is all this blue with the yellow tracer is for. So I'll just desolder it from here and, re and just peel that wire back and put that back after I have uh, prepared this piece or painted it. The little escutcheon here, this black escutcheon was beat up pretty bad actually. Uh, someone had put, you know, pliers on it or a mole grip or vice grip or channel locks or something and they beat it up pretty bad. So what I did, I don't know if you can see that, is I made a little arbor and I chucked it up in my lathe uh, and then I spun it in the lathe and just with some very fine, I think I started with 600 and then I went to 800 and then 1000 grit sandpaper and just cleaned up all those tool marks. Fortunately they weren't real deep, they just scarred it up and you can see there a little bit left there but I'm not worried about that. And then the face here was it was very good. And so I just cleaned it good, got rid of those tool marks, and I think that looks that looks really good and be very, very serviceable when it's uh, back on the bike. That's how I, I treated that piece. This rubber boot is problematic and frankly I don't have a solution for this yet. I could redo what the original I think the previous owner did. You know, and once I get this repaired or reconditioned visually, it's really an aesthetic thing I'm going to be doing to this. It's not functional outside of maybe replacing the sleeving, which is now hard and stiff. Uh, I could, I could re-glue this using contact adhesive like the previous owner did. Uh, not wild about that idea, um, frankly. So I don't have a solution for this yet. I mean, I could probably buy another lock and try to get the boot, but that'd be kind of silly because a lock, and you can still buy these locks, by the way, ignition locks from Suzuki, brand new, uh, still serviced. It doesn't look exactly like this lock. It's uh, the body back here to the left is different. I think the wiring is essentially the same. There might be some minor differences in colors, but you can buy a new lock if you want. I think they're like uh, 70 US dollars. I'm not going to do that just to get a boot. So either I'm going to end up reusing this boot or coming up with an alternative eventually, which I haven't managed to do yet, though I'm giving it some thought. I got a couple ideas I'm going to play around with, but we'll come back to that later on in either this video or this is a multi-part series we'll talk about in another, another episode. We're going to focus today primarily on this piece, and that is... Uh, what, how am I going to uh, refinish this to emulate the original gold uh, di zinc dichromate appearance? Now, you have probably heard me talk about the Eastwood uh, parts or products, rather, it's called Golden Cad right here. You can see them, and it's a three three part process. This is the the gold. And you lay down, and I'm not, this is not intended as a tutorial on how to use the product, but I have used this before. I think I've talked about it before, and it does work. It's paint. You lay down the gold uh, base coat, and then you come back and highlight it with the red and the green, like you can see here. I'm out of, I'm out of the gold, because you use more of this than you do of these two. The red and the green are really just highlight colors. So you use more of this and I'm out. And um, a can of, just to replace this can is almost 30 US dollars plus shipping. So by the time I got just this can of gold, it would probably be at least 36, maybe even pushing 40 US dollars for a can of this. So as an alternative, I'm going to use this. I'm gonna try it. I've never, I've never done it this way before. This is just dupli duplicolor gold um, wheel paint. I sprayed out a little section you can see here. I saw on this little piece of paper here, this uh, gold came from this can. And I think it'll emulate 
close enough this golden cat. After all, again, this isn't really seen, so it's really uh, a lesson in experimentation to see if I can make this look reasonably original. Again, it's be up behind the frame and protect it from further corrosion and the elements, even though the spike won't be outside. So that's the plan. I got to finish, I got to re uh, removing some of these parts. I got to get the sleeve off, get the connector off, uh, desolder this connection here, finish cleaning this, and I'll mask it really good, and then I will spray everything with this uh, gold and then the red and the green. And when we're done, see if this won't look reasonably, uh, like a reasonable facsimile of the original zinc dichromate. So that's the plan. Now I'm not going to show every single step. I'm not going to show all the details. Many of these things you've seen me do before and others. I will bring you back from time to time to keep you in a loop on what I'm doing, but that's the plan going forward to get this ready for a reinstallation. I thought I'd just uh, bring you back and give you a little clip of me working on the harness and trying to get this wiring harness uh, apart so I can go ahead and repaint the body. Already have desoldered this little ground strap here. Use a little desoldering braid that was very easy to do. The clamp right here I'm pointing to, uh, which is part of that grounding strap arrangement, uh, I just opened it up so you can see that this is loose. I also have removed all the wires from the plug. Now let's talk about these these plugs a little bit. Here's here's the plug. There's nine wires here and I'm not sure all of them are used without looking at the wiring diagram in this particular bike. This is probably a generic uh, lock mechanism. But nonetheless you need to be very sure of which position on this plug each of these wires goes into. So not only did I do a uh, photo documentation. I took photos of each side of this wiring block, terminal block, took detailed photos all the way around. I also made a sketch, like you can see there. One, two, three, four, that corresponds to the different sides of the terminal block like that. One, two, three, and four. And then I just made a sketch of which wire went where from that um, vantage point. So you can see red, white with red, yellow, yellow, yellow with red, black, etc., etc. The brown wire, there's a brown wire here, goes into the middle block or terminal right there. So I, I'm, I was a little redundant on this, I admit, but I'm always very uh, conscious of getting the wiring back where it originally was so that I don't have a problem later. Because it gets very confusing. If you were to get those wires in the wrong place, um, it can really mess you up later on as you're trying to figure out what's going on. To get these uh, terminals out is real easy, actually. There's a little tab. I'm using this knife here to illustrate. You can see this little tab right here that I'm lifting with the blade. What that does is that when you push, that's pushed into the block, that little tab will engage and lock and, and prevent this from pulling back out again. So in order to get the wire out, all you need to do is, is I got a very fine screwdriver, I don't use this knife, but I use a fine screwdriver and you just push down on that locking tab and then you pull the wire out at the same time. So you push down and pull and they'll usually pop right out for you like you can see here. And then when I go to put it all back together, I'll make sure these are all just slightly bent up so none of them got too flattened out so that they um, will re-engage like they're supposed to when I put it back together. So this, uh, this wiring, I'm in the process right now, or this loom rather, you can see here of slitting this sleeve because it's very hard and brittle. And what I do, you can actually, I think, get tools for this. I've never used, used one. I just take a, a really good sharp knife blade and you gotta be really careful you don't nick that wire underneath. So you gotta pay attention. And I just, you know, slit that cover and peel it back like that and I work my way all the way up to the other end and then I just fold this right off and I do have I think in stock replacement sleeving like that you can see 
And I just take my time and work my way up, and then just eventually I'll replace it. Now the first thing I'll do uh, when I get this all apart is clean this thoroughly, and this is dusty. And you can use uh, you can acetone, you can use uh, plastic safe, uh, terminal cleaner. Uh, acetone really does a nice job of cleaning this up. It will dull the glossy finish if you're concerned about that. I'm not because it's covered up anyway, but acetone works really well to clean this and just get a little acetone on a rag and wet it and just you know wipe down each each wire and check them over and make sure there's no damage that you might have induced by using a knife. Uh, again this worked originally so so far so good. But that's how I'm going to get this apart. Once I've got it uh, cleaned, then I will re-sleeve it. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is repaint this piece here, like we talked about. Then I'll re-sleeve it and start putting everything. It's 24 hours later, and as you can see, I've got the part all masked off. Around here, three, two, one. It's 24 hours later, and as you can see, I have the ignition switch all painted. Obviously, I've masked everything off. That's the back of the switch here. The wiring itself, and of course, the lock body has all been masked. And I think it turned out pretty well. You can see the, the green, red, and gold to emulate that uh, zinc dichromate look. Again, I laid down a, a good level base coat of gold. I didn't overdo it, but a nice solid coverage of the gold. I let that dry for 10 minutes or so, then I came back with the red and the green and just kind of misted it, which the instructions from Eastwood suggest to do, and to create highlights. And I think you can see there how it looks. And I think it came out really good. I think that gold is very similar to the gold that's supplied by Eastwood, so I'm perfectly content with this, uh, particularly as it's an experiment, see how it turned out. Now I think I'm going to allow this to dry for another, oh, 24 hours or so, and then I think I'm going to clear coat it. You don't have to clear coat it if you don't want to. I think I will. I would prefer to use a flat finish clear or a matte finish. I don't have any of that right now. All I have is gloss. So I'm going to use the gloss, and that's just to protect the finish of the paint when I handle it so that I don't, uh, you know, mess it up. And it, had, it is, again, going to be behind the frame. You know, the only part that really you see is the very face part of it, right here, I should say. Um, so that's all I really need to worry about. The rest of this will be back behind the frame. And, it was, really, it was really done again just to protect it and to, as an experience, see if I can make it look okay. And I think it will. I think it'll turn out okay. So 24 hours or so, I'm going to clear coat it. I'll let that dry for a day or two. Then I'll go ahead and peel off, remove all the masking. And uh, then we'll move on to completing the re-sleeving of the wiring here and putting the block, the wiring block back on, which is right here, by the way. And that has been cleaned with plastic safe contact cleaner. And I did take a, take a very fine wire brush. It's uh, a nylon or synthetic wire brush. Very, it's different sizes, so they can go right down in those openings and clean those right out. The yellowing, there's nothing you can do about the yellowing on that block outside of replacing it. It's, it's permanent uh, and it's, it's not a big deal anyway because you'll never see it and it'll be up into the, up connected to the harness and the frame. So anyway, that's an update right now on this, uh, this piece. Next time you see this, it'll probably be done. We'll see how that goes in a few days.